if you're self-employed and you've been told that you don't qualify for the mortgage you want, or if you're just uh, concerned that you won't qualify for the mortgage that you want because you write too much income off of your taxes or for some other reason, um, then this video is for you. What I want to do in this video is kind of do a high level overview of what some mortgage options are for self-employed individuals. Um, I've been doing mortgages for 20 years. I'm a mortgage broker, which means I look for the best loan program and guidelines, frankly, uh, to fit a customer's particular situation. So I work with a lot of self-employed um, home buyers. What I find typically is that, you know, as a self-employed business owner, you take full advantage of the tax code, of course, and you have a lot of write-offs. So, for example, very rough example, you know, you have $100,000 in business income, but after your write-offs, uh, you know, advertising, whatever, uh, then, you know, maybe you have $75,000 in write-offs. So you only pay taxes on $25,000. Well, when you do a fully documented, regular mortgage, uh, say a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or FHA or VA, et cetera, then your income for that year would be $25,000, which is not going to be enough for you to qualify for the mortgage that you want, um, or maybe at all. So the probably the most common um, loan product that we use in that situation is a bank statement mortgage. So that's exactly what it sounds like. So we do not take tax returns. You don't have to have filed your tax returns. Um, tax returns are not part of the equation at all. What we would do is take either 12 months or 24 months of your business bank statements, typically your business bank statements, and depending on the type of business you're in, that's going to depend on how much of the deposits we can use. So, for example, if you own a used car lot, probably going to take at least 50% um, of the deposits. But uh, recently had somebody, they were a consultant, um, service-based business, and so we took 80% of the deposits. Um, so what I find in that situation is typically have plenty of deposits. Um, one thing to mention though is a lot of people think that, oh, we're just using an alternative kind of documentation. We are, but that also means these aren't government backed mortgages. What that means is there's going to be a higher interest rate. Um, and there's going to be slightly more down payment required. So the minimum down payment is going to be 10%. And unlike a traditional mortgage, where there's not going to be much difference in interest rate depending on how much money you put down or how little, there is a big difference with these non-traditional bank statement style mortgages. So with 10% down, this is being recorded in late August of 2024, you're probably talking about an interest rate over 9%, most likely. But if you, the more you put down and the higher credit score, of course, the lower the interest rate. But probably the lowest your interest rate's gonna get, regardless of how much money you put down or how high your credit score is, again, this is August of 24, is maybe somewhere in the 7% range. Um, but I find that it's a lot cheaper, or uh, the people I work with find it's a lot cheaper than paying taxes. So that's the trade off. Um, again, Trying a high level level video. The second kind of uh, mortgage that we would do is let's say you're a 1099 worker. So you receive 1099. Um, and again, you don't claim all your income. Well, the good thing about a 1099 mortgage is what we would do is just use 90% of the 1099. And all we need is one year is 1099, no taxes or anything. So I've done a few of those, you know, this year. Again, interest rates are going to be the same, but you know, you can um, usually have plenty of income to qualify for what you want. Um, another type of what we call non-traditional self-employed mortgage is uh, where we would actually use no income at all. So these are kind of like the old stated income loans from you know, the early 2000s, but 
in this case, you don't even state any income. There is no income. So it's mainly just based off of uh, down payment and credit score. So in this type of mortgage, you're going to have to have a minimum of 20% down, probably 25 or 30% down. The interest rate is going to again be pretty high, but this is for the client that maybe you don't even hear between jobs. You don't even have a job right now, but you have you know plenty of cash. Um, you know that's a great solution. Uh, you can also do any of these mortgages for a cash out refinance. By the way, um, a fourth type of mortgage is called an asset-based mortgage. So let's say that um, you're, uh, just as an example, you have a lot of money in the bank um, or maybe in retirement accounts, you know, north of a million dollars. And uh, you wanna put, uh, you know, you, you would have to put at least 25 to 30% down. But in this case, you again, would have no income. It's just based off of your assets. So um, as long as you have, Plenty of assets and a good credit score, then we can do that. Again, in this type of situation, your assets aren't put up as collateral at all, as um, a lot of people have that misconception. You're just basically showing that you have enough money to pay, make mortgage payments after closing. Um, so that's you know another solution that we see. Um, and really, I find that those four types of products cover um, any self-employed individual that wants to buy a house. Now, again, you're going to have to have a decent credit score. You could probably go down, if you had a lot of money down, say 40% down, you might be able to go down to say a 620 credit score. But in general, these loans are for people that have decent credit, decent amount of money down. Um, also, something I notice on this, again, I didn't want to make this a super long video, you have to have a certain number of trade lines have come up against this in the past. So a lot of times people, they just end up paying cash for things and they haven't established many trade lines. You want to make sure that you have, you know, probably at least three trade lines and trade lines are just, you know, credit card, car loan, whatever, something that shows up on your credit report. So anyway, um, if you find that uh, any of these would fit your situation, go to my website, mortgagesbyscott.com and I can, uh, definitely help you out. And if you found this video helpful, it would be super helpful for me if you just click like and subscribe. Um, that way more people will see it. All right. Thanks.